Good afternoon, I'm Major John Brackenberry, Divisional Commander for the Del Oro Division, which serves Northern California and Northern Nevada. And with me is... Lieutenant Larry Carmichael, Social Services Officer here in Sacramento County. And we're here at the Salvation Army Divisional Headquarters today, celebrating the Big Day of Giving event where we need your help. We need your help to help raise our goal of $250,000. And we'll get to the totals of where we are in just a moment. But we wanted to talk to you today about housing insecurity. And we've got some people that'll be coming on a little bit later to sort of talk about what that looks like here in Sacramento and how you can help each and every person that may be struggling with housing insecurity. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the big day of giving? Well, it's today. Today's the big day of giving. It's a 24-hour fundraising yeah. period where over 700 nonprofits come together for a day to do good, to fundraise for meeting the needs of this community. We're so grateful to be part of that. It's gone on since 2013, and as a day, has raised over $52 million. And if you look at the, the, the clock now, the leaderboard, we're already multiple millions further in today as 700 nonprofits working together. Right, and as you talk about that, so the tote board that we have right now, gosh, I feel like this is a big telethon. Yeah. But it is, <laughs> in, a, in a way, because we're raising money to help people. And right now, we are sitting at $226,417. And that is tremendous. But you know what? Below that dollar amount, it shows that there are $74,441 of unmatched dollars that have yet to be claimed. So we need your help. Go to bigdaysac.org. Get your family, get your friends, get your enemies, as I said <laughs> earlier in this segment. Get all of those people together to help donate to the Salvation Army because your donations are vitally important to the service and ministry that the Salvation Army performs in Sacramento and beyond. And you might be thinking, well, why is it important? Why do we need, why do we need your monetary support? Well, the Salvation Army, we run on donations of time and money. We utilize generous gifts and generous volunteers to help do the most good in the communities that we serve. In Sacramento County, that looks like providing a low-cost preschool, sports camps, after-school programs, music and arts lessons, food, rental and utility assistance, job training, emergency shelter for those experiencing homelessness, sober living, and transitional living for families who are working to overcome that poverty and, and domestic abuse. We, at just one of our sites, we end up seeing those that are coming out of sex trafficking and domestic violence all the time, and we're helping to have them rebuild their lives Absolutely. in a safe environment of hope. The pandemic has increased the need, increased the demand for services, and that's why we need your help to meet the tireless need. Yeah, you know, we get families and, and individuals that come to us day in and day out who just need our help. They, they're at wit's end. They don't know how they're going to put food on the table. They don't know how they're going to be able to pay for their electric bills or how they're even going to be able to stay in their home, which is one of the Salvation Army's biggest things is to try to keep people off the streets to begin with. Yes. That's why food insecurity and dealing with the rental assistance, and utility assistance is so important to keep families in their homes before they become homeless. But even if that does happen, we're there to help. And it's because of our sponsors and our donors that yes. allow us to do what we do. They are the army behind the army. And we want to just pause for a moment to say thank you to those individuals who support us um, day in and day out. And so we want to talk first about our Red Shield sponsors. We want to thank all of the donors and sponsors today of this virtual fundraiser. And we're doing this on this big day of giving. You are truly all doing the most good. And we'd like to take a second to recognize Tri-Counties Bank. They are phenomenal in what they've been able to help us with this past year. They were also this year's recipient of the Spirit of Caring Award. And all of, your, all of their support throughout the years that has helped the Salvation Army help meet the needs of individuals. So what we want to do is just to take a look at the video to show how Tri-Counties Bank has gone above and beyond to help the Salvation Army and their community. We are this year honoring Tri-Counties Bank and their Senior Vice President Scott Robertson in our Spirit of the Caring Award. And we do that to honor both the institution and the individual who've done so much to advance our mission of helping those who are most in need. Tri-Counties Bank has, has been a supporter 
for over the last 15 years. And the problems that we're addressing, homelessness, food insecurity, addiction, disaster relief, those are all complex problems. And we need a long-term partner that will help us through the various solutions and work that are necessary to resolve these problems. Triad County Bank has been phenomenal in helping us overcome many challenges, including the campfire of 2018. And that single-mindedness that we have as a team to serve the community has been extremely powerful as we look towards the tail end of long-term recovery of the campfire, but also the impact of the pandemic on Butte County. Annually, Tri-County Bank holds the Tis the Season food drive to support the Salvation Army in Chico, Orville, Redding, and Yuba Sutter. In the last three years, the drive has collected 100,000 pounds of food for those in need. It is truly an honor to serve alongside them, and we are so blessed and grateful that they continue to partner with us. Whether it's during disaster relief time, whether it's during the COVID pandemic, the Salvation Army is here for our communities and making our communities better in so many ways through workforce development, through disaster relief, through transitional living, and through meeting the food insecurity needs of our communities. It's important that Tri-Counties Bank partners with the Army. It's part of our core values of who we are. It's what service with solutions means. And that's exactly what Tri-Counties Bank is all about, delivering and helping our communities succeed financially. Tri-Counties Bank, for me, epitomizes what it means to be an institution that serves the community. We thank Tri-Counties Bank and Scott Robertson for their help and their assistance in helping us address important issues. What an amazing sponsor, what an amazing community supporter uh, Tri-Counties Bank is. We're, we're honored that they uh, partner with us in so mm -hmm. many communities, so many ways, have helped us really bring people out of the ashes and rebuild their lives after Absolutely. significant events. Now, they're not our only uh, sponsor. They're not our only donors. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we have and get to recognize and celebrate some Red Shield donors, uh, the Ralph and Marla Anderson Family Foundation, the RCA Community Fund, and the Hank and Nancy Fisher Family Fund. Uh, they're generous. They have been so generous as donors. Yes, uh, each of them gives up over $30,000 towards our goal and towards our efforts today. That's tremendous. That, it is. And you know, along with that, we have, we want to recognize our drum sponsors today as well. Those who have donated at least $2,500. So we'd like to say thank you to SKK Developments, Greg Thatch, Jim and Janet Eldridge, Bill Martin, Buzz Oates and the Morgan Stanley Gift Fund, Central Valley Community Bank, Delfino Madden, Descor Builders, Franklin Templeton, Gilbert Associates Inc., Larry Booth, Merrill Lynch, Newman and John Frisch, Pacific Coast Building Products, Premier Security Group, Remy Moose Manley, LLP, uh, Shutter Electric, and UCP. Thank you all for your support, for your continued support of the Salvation Army and the ministries and the programs and service that we provide to the people in this community. Uh, indeed, thank you. We <coughs> we could not do what we do without you. And <laughs> what a long list that yes. you just got to go through. Which is there. a great list. It is. It's nice to have the, a long list of donors it is. and supporters. Uh, and if someone's watching and you're looking for any of the industries or, or to, to build something or yeah. buy something or invest something, there's a list to trust yeah, because absolutely. they're building back into the community. And, and, you want, and we want you to support them as well. Yeah. You know, they're supporting us, so support them in, as well um, as they give back to this community. Absolutely. Now, today's topic is housing insecurity. It's, mm -hmm. it's looking at the fact that we are in the middle of a housing epidemic in the midst of a virus pandemic. Now, before coronavirus, before this pandemic that we're living through, poverty rates in the state of California were nearly 13%, according to the Public Policy Institute here of California. Those rates are likely much higher, much, much higher. No here in Sacramento County, uh, the reality is that we're probably looking at a hundredfold increase in homelessness since 2019. That's amazing. So we're seeing it. We're, the, we're we're living the reality of increased need, increased demand, increased poverty, increased housing insecurity. Um, one of the ways that we, we know that to be true is that this time last year, 
our demand for services was at 1,100% above our historical trends. Yeah. And that's just unbelievable. And we're, we're not even back to normal. We're, no. we're still hovering near 300% additional demand from historical trends. Right. And we know it's not going to go back soon. Right. And housing insecurity is one of the biggest issues that we're dealing with. I, I don't think I have to share with anybody that you just drive around and you see these encampments that are taking place because people do not have a place to live. And so that is one of the issues that we want to talk about today and to bring to light and how you can help, again, by your donations at BigDaySac.org. We would encourage you to go to that website right now and to help support us so that we are able to support those individuals who really and truly need it. So one of the biggest issues that we had had even before the pandemic was housing insecurity. Yes. California and the Sacramento region has some of the highest housing costs in the country and the number of people experiencing homelessness continues to rise and the Salvation Army provides housing to hundreds of people at our emergency shelter and our two transitional living centers but we don't provide this housing without help it True. takes a community to help people transition from homelessness to permanent housing and we can't do this without your help and we can't solve this complex issue alone we team up with people all over the place. Those individuals who are experts in their field, and we come alongside of them in order to determine how best to help meet that need. And your donations allow us to help meet that need. Your donations really are uh, the difference in between us being able to save a life or not. <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the ability for us to be able to pick up the phone when someone calls, the ability for us to go out to the sidewalk and offer mm -hmm. a bottle of water on a hot day and let someone know that you're not invisible, you're seen, you're worthwhile, so start making those choices for yourself. Right. Start, start believing in yourself because we believe in you. Exactly. That you as donors, you as partners, us as a community are rebuilding this town, are going to overcome this housing insecurity. Now, we, uh, in the first live segment today, we had the opportunity to hear from an expert panel on food insecurity. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, welcoming back Kitty O'Neill as, as the host of our panel discussion. She, uh, she, of course, is a host and well-known and loved yeah. in the region, KFBK, uh, also a beloved Sacramento advisory board member. She, she helped us pull together a panel of experts, a panel of partners that help us get the work accomplished. Um, I think that we're going to be able to enjoy another segment and panel discussion. Yeah, the discussion that you're going to see in just a moment is about housing insecurity here in Sacramento County and how some of the leading organizations in our area are working to get people off the streets and into permanent housing. We hope you enjoy this conversation online and here with us right now is Kitty O'Neill and um, our panel of guests. We have another conversation about the Big Day of Giving as sponsored by iHeartRadio and the Salvation Army. And this time around, we're talking about housing insecurity and what that has looked like through the pandemic. Now, as you may know, there have been great efforts made on many different levels to keep people in their homes and steps have been taken to accomplish that. Uh, but we are gonna talk with our panel today about that topic, how it's been addressed, and how they've been able to help mitigate any problems that have come up during this time. So we're gonna go around the room and start our introductions. So if you could just tell us your name and your affiliation, and just maybe your association with the topic in general, and then after the introductions, we'll go back around and go in a little deeper. So Aisha, we'll start with you. Okay, my name is Aisha Toombs. I'm a social worker at, based out of um, Mather. Um, California, and um, I am a member of the homeless uh, team in Sacramento, and specifically my job is to help our homeless veterans get into um, residential treatment for substance use, um, and also right now um, I'm working with Salvation Army um, as their liaison as well to help get just our homeless vets into a shelter as well, and then from there we do work on substance use, permanent housing, and, and, and that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Aisha. Yeah. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Kitchen. I am a shelter supervisor with Salvation Army. All right. And Julie Teal. 
Hi, I'm Julie Teal. Um, I'm a member of the National Salvation Army Advisory Board. Um, our family um, owns Rayleigh's and we are very much um, interested in the continuum of the programs that stop um, homelessness and stop the ho housing insecurity. Very good, thank you. All right, well, let's go back around again and talk specifically about the pandemic, what you've seen and the efforts that you've made to help out the problems that we've been encountering. So Aisha, uh, how has this pandemic year been different for you than other years? We've always kind of had, you know, folks struggling with kind of substance use, things like that, who are also homeless. Um, but I think sort of the added stress of the pandemic and then not even being able to sort of connect with loved ones or, you know, see them in person, it has to be their phone or video. It does seem like some of the veterans I've worked with are struggling more with their substance use because of sort of the lack of connection and communication with, you know, their family and friends is, is what I've noticed a lot. Um, and it's, it's, it's also been a challenge to then find permanent housing for some of our folks because of the pandemic, just because at least in the beginning where, you know, a lot of people were, were sort of not working or it was very limited staff. So then trying to find housing, you know, I mean, we couldn't, my colleagues couldn't sort of interact with the, with our vets the same way and then trying to do everything virtual and it just sort of made of finding permanent housing more of a challenge and it seems like there weren't a, there haven't been a lot of quite as many opportunities for housing whether because people are kind of staying put or just you know kind of for other reasons I'm not sure have you been able to help find these people more permanent housing during this time have, have your efforts been successful? And if so, tell us how you've accomplished that. My colleagues, yes. Um, I think it's it's definitely slowed down a lot where, you know, maybe the average kind of veteran, it would take maybe three to four months. Now it's, it's taking like five to six months, sometimes even a little bit longer. Um, when, when, veterans are in, in my programs, especially the, the substance use ones, we also talk about um, sort of sober living or like maybe transitional housing. So not necessarily maybe their own apartment, um, but either maybe like a group home or something like that, just to sort of have that same similar accountability in terms of maintaining sobriety. Um, I know sometimes working with Salvation Army, we've some of our vets, they need a higher level of care. So we focus on more like the room and board, board and care, some sort of assisted living. So they're not necessarily living independently. Um, so that's kind of been a little bit different of a, of a focus. Some of our vets who are, you know, at Salvation Army who kind of like just kind of like down on their luck sort of thing, they are able to kind of, I think, a little bit on their own kind of look for places and sort of pound the pavement, so to speak. Um, but some of the ones that maybe whether it's kind of medical issues or kind of cognitive challenges, that's where we kind of have to step in a little more, maybe kind of look for like, yeah, group home type situation or, you know, room and board or something like that. Thank you. And Christina, let's talk about what you do with the Salvation Army and your efforts in particular. What have you encountered this year? Um, some of the struggles that I think that we've encountered at the shelter, right now we cater to veterans. And during the pandemic, uh, many of the veterans were moved out of the facility and moved into motels um for the, as they said for their safety because of COVID um so keeping them in our shelter was a problem <laughs> um, because the VA wanted to place them outside of the shelter uh so the ones that we were able to retain it was difficult to um help them connect with housing in the community because during the pandemic because of the lack of housing available the lack of housing in Sacramento during the pandemic, it, it just seemed like everything since it was shut down was so much harder to connect with an actual human being to get somebody to come and look at their place, you know, because of the lockdown, it made it difficult. Um, so I, I think that that was one of our biggest struggles for us um, was actually getting them to stay in the shelter <laughs> and then getting them connected with actual housing providers in the community. And how do you feel right now about the, um, the progress that's been made despite those challenges? So we're still at a very low capacity. 
Um, they, uh, the funding for the motels hasn't quite run out yet, but we are starting to see some of them trickle back into the shelter. Um, we are seeing that a lot uh, more things are open, more people, we're getting more engagement within the community um, in regards to like planning somebody up for uh, a Section 8 voucher or something like that. And we're getting a little bit more engagement now that it's starting to open up a little bit more. The veterans are very much more motivated now to go out since most of them have gotten their um, immunization, their, their shot. Um, most of them are a little bit more eager to go out into the community now and um, take the chance. Okay, great. Thank you, Christina. And Julie, of course, uh, you are no stranger to helping people find housing. There's the E. Claire Rayleigh Transitional Living Center that has been incredibly uh, successful. Maybe you could talk about how it's going there and just some other things that maybe we haven't thought about that have occurred to you during the pandemic. Um, actually, yesterday I was on a call um, with the local advisory council and they were talking about that we had just had had three families that have graduated through that program. And three families graduating during a pandemic, I think is something really to be proud of because that means that those three families and we're still at full occupancy there, by the way, um, had complete support and all the tools that they needed for family reconciliation, to learn fiscal literacy, parenting classes, all of those elements that I think people need in order to leave and go out into society and be successful in contributing people as they would like to be and they desire to be. Um, I was just thrilled to hear that this week that we had those three families graduating in that program. Um, each component, I think that, um, you know, we like to always say we want to meet people where they are because they're often they're not because of some desire of their own. Um, it's situational usually, and obviously mental health plays a tremendous role in this. Um, but I think that between our, the Salvation Army shelters and the transitional housing and then the return to work programs, um, you know, that is the way that we're going to solve the homeless problem. The housing insecurity is really, I think, um, a byproduct of not having enough affordable housing and enough workforce housing. And I see those as two very different things, but two incredibly important things. Now, Julia, I think what you're bringing up here is so critical because, and I'd like to hear from the rest of you too, as kind of a follow-up to this, the, the homeless and housing problem it just is baffling to so many people. In, and not just in Sacramento, but clearly, if you travel at all, you'll see it's it's widespread. But just even in our own backyards, on our way to work, by our neighborhoods, we, we see the problem. I mean, it's not something that is just unseen and talked about. We're, we're faced with it. It's multifaceted. It's mental health. It's financial. I mean, it, there, there's a lot of things. So um, when you said finding the solution to the homeless problem, uh, anything else you can share because you are all in the helping business. You're on the end where you help alleviate the problem. So I would love to hear any more specifics you can share about what you're doing to, to that end. Well, here at the shelter, we try to um, provide a holistic approach, right? So we're trying to address the mental health issues, the substance use issues, um, the employment issues. We're trying to connect them to resources to help them overcome some of those things. Cause it's not about finding them housing and getting them in housing. It's about helping them obtain and retain that housing, right? Keep it long-term, um, not have them back out homeless in a year because they haven't addressed the holistic approach to everything. Um, so I do believe, deeply believe that it is about addressing all of those issues in the short time or trying to help them address all of those issues in the short time that we have them for them to be successful. And I think that that's part of the, the solution for the housing problem. Great. I would say, yeah, I agree with that as well. And um, at least with sort of, you know, the contract that we have, you know, with Salvation Army and then the other ones in the Sacramento area, um, you know, as I say, you know, sort of the programs are set up for 90 days, but they can stay longer than that, you know, and we, we basically say case by case basis, but most of the time they can, you know, they, they can stay longer because even pre pandemic, sometimes housing was not sort of all wrapped up in this nice little bow and at 90 days. Um, 
they're still looking for housing or maybe they're still working on substance use, mental health, looking for employment. So it, so it does help to not have that, okay, 90 days, you have to leave. Um, but you've still got to be sort of actively working on things. So I think that helps a lot. Um, and we do on our homeless program have an employment specialist, um, you know, who has, I might've come out to Salvation Army. I don't remember, or I know he's reached, I think he's, he's worked with some of our folks at Salvation Army, even if he hasn't actually had a chance to go out there, especially during the pandemic. I'm not sure if, if that's been possible. <laughs> um, but definitely, you know, veterans have, have reached out to him to try to look for employment. And that's been a challenge too in this pandemic. But some veterans have, have still managed to find employment, which is, which is really huge. Um, and so, you know, like Christina said, it's, it's, it's sort of, and, and Julie has mentioned sort of, you know, it's, it's systemic and it's sort of multi-layered and it's sort of not just, okay, fix this part and, you know, and forget about the rest. It's, we've got to kind of think about everything as a whole. So, um, so that is sort of our, our goal generally as a homeless program is to sort of focus on all of those things. Um, yeah, it, you know what I'm hearing you, Aisha and Christina both say you're talking about the holistic approach and it, it really has to be that way. I, I don't think you can just try to um, focus on just one aspect because they're all intertwined. And uh, Julie, I, it's, it's easy to get discouraged, I think, when, when we look at what we're facing, it, it, even just in Sacramento, it, it's reached alarming levels, uh, the homeless problem. And so um, yet, there are bright spots, there is some progress being made. And I think that you uh, have seen that firsthand and we really appreciate what you can share in terms of, um, as you just did, even with those three families about moving forward. Thank you, Kitty. I think, you know, one of the things that where Rayleigh's tries to really have an impact is number one, we work obviously with the food banks and our food for families program within the stores allows people to contribute and donate and know that 100% of what they're giving is going in their community. I think that the food insecurity goes right along with the housing insecurity mm -hmm. because one leads to the other and you can't, it, it just doesn't work otherwise. So I think that is an important factor. I think the other facet that I think all employers can help with is trying to fast track um, employment opportunities when someone has completed a program such as a culinary program with the Salvation Army, for example. If people and employers will be open to giving everyone an opportunity has who has shown their dedication, their ability to be timely, um, and their commitment to want to have a change in their own lives. And we can be part of that solution, but, but with the employment piece. Um, again, we want to preface everything with the fact that if there is mental illness issues or substance abuse, those have to be dealt with. And they because it'll just be that vicious circle otherwise. But I do think that people who have gone through different programs have shown their spirit and their commitment to want to have a different life. But employers really have to be open to that. And I think the housing part is the last piece because if someone is in a shelter or has an opportunity to go to transitional housing, what they build during that period of time that they're with us is they, they get the foundation they get the life skills, the tools in their toolbox that they truly need to go out and be confident and competent in the workplace. The last piece is they all need to have reliable and trustworthy childcare. And I know, for example, at the Salvation Army, the Alhambra campus right now, because that a lot of things change with families, they have a lot of openings. And how do we get the word out about, here's an opportunity to match up somebody who now has an employment opportunity to have childcare because otherwise perhaps they're having to stay living in their car. They don't, they can't get that job because they don't have childcare. They can't leave a situation maybe they wanna get out of. Um, and they end up in these situations, these housing, um, the homeless cities that are sprouting up all over are truly indicative of the need to not just be putting, you know, tossing some money to either an individual or something, but to put them in a collaborative program where there's a continuum and there are metrics that measure the results of what we're doing and seeing the outcome and following these people so that we can see that truly what we made it as an investment, they are the investment in the end when they have housing, they have food and they have childcare if they need it. You know, I'm glad you brought up childcare, Julie, because I think during the pandemic, even 
steady families have realized the challenges when there's a need for childcare and they're trying to continue on their lives. So that's a very important component. Well, is there anything else you want to all add as a, a final a word here uh, about um, this, the progress, the situation, continuing issues, um, anything you want to leave us with? My final thought would just be, Kitty, that um, we should always be praying for these people and we should um, always give them a smile, um, even if we're, we don't know their situation to perhaps give out money on the street or something. But I think that we need to make sure that every person that we come encounter with feels validated as an individual, a human, um, that we value as a person in our community, wherever they are, whatever their situation is, but that we acknowledge it. And of course, when we can send out, hand out a card that gives them something to a resource center, um, that's a lot better than I think a dollar bill is to give them a resource um, mm -hmm. to go to. Even if it's someone that out there that uh, maybe you're not a veteran, maybe you aren't quite appropriate for the program, is to still come by, come through our doors. We can help you, we'll connect you to resources. Um, the Salvation Army is here to help everyone. We don't care what your religious background is or, or mental health issues. Come through our doors. We are open and we want to help. Great. Thanks, Christina. All right, Aisha, I think you get the last word. <laughs> so, sort of, I guess, to piggyback on, on what everyone else said. Yeah, I think, too, you know, just having a smile, being open, because we just, we don't know someone's background, and you know, and it just, it puts up that wall if you don't have sort of an open sort of, you know, facial expression, body language, you know, if you're sort of putting up this wall, then they're maybe not going to sort of Give you all the information you need to kind of help them move forward and i think you know just important like julie said not necessarily giving them a dollar but say hey here's a number you can sort of empowering them to say hey we have reason you've got a call because i know sometimes at salvation are you know and you know with our homeless but it's like can you call this number for me or can you know like hey no here's the number we're gonna have you but i'll sit with you yeah but you're gonna call you know? right <laughs> Just that empowerment piece as well and just being open to you know to whoever sort of yeah literally walks through your door just because you don't know what they've been through so yeah everyone is welcome yes <laughs> and we want to help we want to make a difference we just need them to come and take the first step through the door yeah right Aisha and Christina and Julie thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your uh, your hearts with us today. I, I think what you all are doing is very encouraging and uh, it should, I think, make people feel like we there actually could be an answer to all this, but um, we thank you for sharing this with us all today. Much appreciation. Thank you, Kitty, for hosting that panel discussion. And thank you to Julie Till, uh, National Advisory Board member and also uh, member of the Rayleigh family. Uh, um, Aisha Toombs with the VA and Christina Kitchen, our own Center of Hope Shelter Director. Thank you for being part of that discussion and just opening our eyes to more of what's, what it means with housing insecurity and how we're fighting it. And how you can help. And you can help by donating to BigDaySac.org. Um, our, our total right at the moment is $226,596 with 74,351 matching funds still available. So if you donate now to BigDaySac.org, those dollars will help. It's a dollar for dollar match. You will help us to reach that goal that much quicker. So thanks for all of you who have donated already. And we look forward to having even more of you donate so we can blow our goal out of the water, not just so that we have the more money, but so that we can help reach people and help them with their lives and getting them back on track, particularly with housing insecurity. Absolutely. The, our goal is always to keep people in the housing <coughs> that they're in, stop those snowball effects of, of you, know, back, you know, catching up on utilities, catching up on rent, catching up on... Yeah on fill in the blank that has caused economic uh, ac uh, you know, financial hardship, stop it before it snowballs into homelessness. But That's as right. you've said multiple times, 
even if you do end up homeless, we're still there to help. Absolutely. And our donors make that possible. I'm Lieutenant Larry Carmichael, Social Services Officer here in Sacramento County, joined with... Major John Brackenberry, Divisional Commander for the Delaware World Division, and we serve Northern California, Northern Nevada, but we're here today to talk about the big day. Big day I'm of giving. I just yeah. lost a big day <laughs> of giving, and we need your support because the money that you're um, supporting us with helps to help people within the Sacramento region and those individuals um, who desperately need our help, and we can't do it without your support. So by donating your time, by donating your talents, and donating your treasure, we are able, as a community, to come together to help those in most need. Absolutely. And your, your donor dollars go uh, here in Sacramento to three different uh, housing programs, three different residential programs. So here in Sacramento, we're blessed uh, to have the support of the community to operate our Center of Hope <coughs> Emergency Shelter. It's in the downtown area. We also have our Next Step Sober Living, uh, Transitional Living Center, uh, which is under renovation, but when it, when it finishes, when we go you know, when that goes live again, we're gonna have over 80 people packing that house, rebuilding their lives, rebuilding and connecting them to families. We're excited about that. And, and that's it, a beautifully renovated facility too, I might add. Now, my wife and I just moved here, moved back here um, from Alaska, and that was one of the first programs that we saw was the next step program yeah. and the renovations that have already been made yeah. and then this phase two is is going to be coming here pretty soon and that is just beautiful yeah. work and that, you know it we're is. providing the a place for men and women to be able to learn um, different um, job opportunities yeah. and job skills. Yeah, the, yeah. so that environment isn't just about sober living, but also re retooling, reskilling right. yourself. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in our final segment of the day at three o'clock with job insecurity. And then- That was a teaser. It was. was a teaser it for is. a three o'clock so, show. Yeah, so, so make don't sure miss you join it. us. Because yeah. that's some good stuff. And you want to hear what the Salvation Army is doing in our community to help rebuild lives. And that's an exciting segment that you'll not want to miss. It is, and we, uh, as, as it is with anyone, um, the stories that we get to share, uh, we share just one or two lives yeah. worth of stories, uh, but are impacting over 400 people a night in our housing here. Uh, our third housing program, of course, is our E. Claire Rayleigh Transitional Living Center, uh, located in Sacramento County. We, we actually kind of keep that site a little bit secret because it, uh, it, 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 we welcome individuals there that are coming from domestic violence situations right. or individuals that are coming from being trafficked in the streets. So yeah. it's a black site, what we call a black site, but lives are being transformed, being rebuilt. Uh, individuals are learning to live with hope again there. Uh, now, you might be thinking, how, how much does this stuff cost? How much does it cost to, to shelter someone? Well, at our Center of Hope, for case management, a bed, three hot meals, behavioral health assistance, connection to a variety of services, it's just $37 a night. And that's not bad. That, that really is a tremendous value for what we're providing. I mean, you can't get a hotel room in the city no. for $37 a night, plus all of the other amenities that go along with that. Exactly. Not just amenities of food and a place to sleep, but actual um, life building skills that are gonna allow men and women to get themselves back on their feet and reclaim their lives once again. Absolutely, and that $37, as you mentioned, it's cheaper than a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Has, it comes with a Safer lot more. than a hotel room. Absolutely, and it, you know, our Center of Hope, even in the midst of the pandemic, we have a 65% success rate of moving individuals from homelessness to permanent housing, mm -hmm. and doing so in less than 90 days. 65%. That's an amazing number. 65% of those individuals coming into our Hope Shelter are going to reclaim their lives and get back into um, living yeah. again. Being productive and, citizens, yeah. self-sustaining, the having pride about themselves and knowing that they can also reach out and help others. Absolutely. It's amazing. And then because we have touched on about the Eclair Rayleigh program, now that you might be thinking, okay, that's taking care of families. That's going to be that's going to be expensive. Kids are involved. The you know, no, $11.50 a night to house someone in our transitional living yeah. programs. Um, I, you know, you can't even buy a kid a lunch these days no. for $11.50, where we're saying we're going to give them housing, we're going to give them a playground, we're going to give them tutoring, we're going to give them social workers, we're going to give them behavioral counselors, we're going to give them a playground where they get to have a lot of fun right. for $11.50 a night. So if you stop and think about that, just think of, of two lattes a week, and you're helping to keep a family 
in a safe environment and helping them to become self-sufficient again. That's not much, that's not much to be asking um, no. to help some of these families that are in desperate need right yeah. now. Yeah, and if you're looking at a way to partner, a way to, to really help us transform how Sacramento looks towards homelessness, transitional housing is a way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, our program has a 95% <coughs> success rate of placing individuals into permanent housing. Each year we get to celebrate with families who are buying their very first house, yeah. others that are moving into, uh, into apartments, others that are moving into townhomes, others that are, are just getting themselves settled into their forever home. And, and that, all of that right there is, is, is totally able to happen because of your support. Individuals who are going online at bigdaysac.org and donating dollars to the Salvation Army. That's what our, our sponsors and our donors, who we've mentioned a little bit ago, are, are helping us to do. It's a community coming together to help a, a, a greater need. And as we've said, you know, homelessness is a, is a real epidemic right now in the state of California. Yes. And so the Salvation Army is working tirelessly across the state, but here, particularly in the Sacramento region, we are, we are working tirelessly to help men and women, boys and girls, get off the street to get into sustainable living and helping them to, to reconnect in their lives and being productive again and just reclaiming their lives. Um, and so your support is, is critical to helping to keep those people off the street and giving them hope yeah. that their lives can be better. Hope and you know the one of the one of the things that we love seeing is that our alumni, our graduates, our mm. program completers, uh, they don't they don't disappear after they finish. No, they become part of our community. They become part of our family, and they come back and they share their experience with others. They help others that are currently in our programs know that there's a better decision to be made. There's a better future for them. There's a brighter day ahead, and they're able to share about that they have sobriety 20 years. From, from when they were last through our doors as a client, or that they themselves were there sitting in that apartment, not knowing if they were going to be able to financially make it, and now they're in their fifth year in their home and thriving in their life. And those are the kind of stories that inspire me to get up and do what we do every single day to help families. Um, hearing those stories of success, um, overcoming addiction, finding a home, establishing and reestablishing family connections, that's amazing. And it, you know, you hear those stories and their testimonies are just so powerful. And one of the testimonies that we yeah. have right now that we want to share with you um, on how the Salvation Army's programs are changing lives is an individual named Sharon. She is a single mom who said that without the Salvation Army's help, she does not believe that she would be alive today. And a powerful testimony, a powerful story. Just sit back for just a moment and listen to Sharon's story. And I became someone my children didn't know. Sharon is a single mother of three and a new grandmother. Addiction is so strong, for, even for the strongest person. My kids and everybody in my life thought I was just the strongest person because I took care of everybody's problems. She says she almost lost it all when she relapsed and became homeless. This time around, I knew I was gonna die. Sharon's family and her son Tomas knew this time was different. Yeah, I was really worried about her. I called 911 on myself and I told them what I was feeling. I told them um, if I don't get help, I've got money on me right now. If I don't get someone who really wants to get serious with me, um, I'm going to die out here. And I have kids. I've got a grandbaby. This can't happen. This isn't who I am. Sharon entered a crisis residential program where she was able to deal with the underlying causes of her alcohol addiction. And I knew that this was it. As far as the drinking went, I knew that if I went back to that, that I was gonna lose everything forever. After completing the program, Sharon and her son moved into the Salvation Army's E. Claire Rayleigh Transitional Living Center and found peace. 
When I got here, I could breathe because I knew that I was going to be all right. This has given me an appreciation for the small things again. Being able to step outside and breathe, being able to walk, being able to go to work. Not saying I have to go to work, but I get to go to work. She's now focused on growing her faith and building a future for her family. Yeah, she's been, did a really great job so far. I'm proud of her. I can't express the gratitude um, for just being given the chance to just get back in line with the Lord, with myself, um, with my kids. Uh, just, it's all around a blessing to, have, to know that they care. That means so much. And all I can say is thank you. I am grateful. I'm grateful. What an amazing story, right? Yeah, Sharon. Sharon. And, and in that video, we got to hear from a man of many words. Yes. Well, maybe few words. Yeah, uh, few words, <laughs> yeah, I think. Tomas. <clears throat> um, now, Tomas, I, I've had the joy of seeing and working alongside of him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, just before Easter, we did a Good Friday event out at the Claire Rayleigh Transitional Living Center. And, you know, I just began to hide some eggs and stuff for the little ones to be able to find. And he comes up and he goes, can I help? Can I help? And I tried to redirect him just to go have fun. And he's like, no, can I help? Yeah, I and know. so he had so much fun <laughs> hiding these, these plastic eggs and then standing back and watching all the little kids rush in to find it. Yeah. And of course, uh, we, we allowed him to award himself with a good handful of chocolate at the end. But Tomas, such a blessing. And he's at the point where he's so comfortable and he knows that there's a bright day ahead right. that he's thinking of others now. And he's probably never had that experience no. before. And so the opportunity of living in the Claire Rayleigh Transitional Living Program has allowed him to experience things that he's probably never had the opportunity to experience before. And so you have families that are in that program yeah. that are creating memories yes. that will last a lifetime, a memory of being able to come together and to reclaim their lives. Yeah. Because the Salvation Army has been um, able to do that through the generous support of, of viewers like you. Um, again, bigdaysac.org, your dollars help to go towards families like Sharon to give them hope that life is better than what they've been experiencing. So please donate today and help us to reach our goal. Help us to help families. Yes. That's the most important yes. thing. We want to be able to help as many, many families, as many individuals as we can. Your donations help us to help them. We all need to come together to help one another out. Um, and that's, that's, that's what this is all about, the big day of giving. The big day of giving is everybody coming together to give what they can in order to help meet the needs of our fellow citizens that are, that are truly struggling. It's a day to do the most good. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly. I'm Lieutenant Larry Carmichael, Social Services Officer for the Salvation Army here in Sacramento County and... Major John Brackenberry, Divisional Commander for the Del Oro Division, which oversees Northern California and Northern Nevada. And we are so privileged to be here with you today just to share in these segments uh, we talked earlier about food insecurity. Today we're talking about housing insecurity. This is a plug for our 3 o'clock shot. We're going to be talking about uh, job insecurity. There you go. And how we're working to overcome that and partnering with others to do it. But before we, before <coughs> we really push our plug for the 3 o'clock, um, let's touch base a little bit about our Trumpet sponsors. Okay. Uh, Trumpet sponsors, they're the donors that gave $10,000 uh, or more, at least $10,000. And so just a special thank you and recognition uh, to uh, Woodside Credit, who helped us out in that way as a Trumpet sponsor. The Along with InterWest. InterWest, that's yeah. right. The How could we forget that? Uh, my apologies to them. Uh, Great sponsors and helping us to do the most good, which is which is what it's all about. Yeah, and they they learned from they learned about us through Tri Counties Bank. Yes. The, so that's one of those times and occasions where one sponsor is so diehard and sold and connected to our mission. You know, they're they're banking with with solutions. The, we're here to show up and help with solutions. So it's that connection, it's that building community, building trust, and we're so thrilled and honored that you you trust us to Absolutely. take that money and impact and invest it in human life. Absolutely. So thank you to all of our sponsors, all of our donors today for this, this big day, sac.org, the big day of giving. Um, we need your support. The community needs your support. Yes. 
The families that come to us day in and day out, the individuals who come to us need your support. So we look forward to um, seeing those donations come in. We still have quite a bit of money that is the, on the matching funds, um, dollar for dollar match, or you give a dollar. Um, we've had generous donors that, have, that are pledging to give a dollar as well. So help to make that a reality yes. in, the, in our totals that we're, we're getting. Our goal for this year is $250,000, but I am confident that we are, gonna, we are gonna surpass that amount so that we can help meet the needs of more people in our community. The, be sure to plan now. Uh, turn on those notifications. Uh, don't miss uh, uh, our live segments. Don't miss them. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about uh, Big Day <coughs> of Giving. Yes, we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. again. That, it happens to be that it day. Happens to be that day. It happens to be today. BigDaySAC.org. But we're also going to go ahead and have our third and final panel discussion revolving around job insecurity and how uh, our experts, our community partners, were coming together to overcome that. Again, uh, graciously, iHeartMedia and Kitty O'Neill uh, running that panel for us, pulled together everyone on Zoom and said, let's have a chat. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's bring out to light what's happening in the community and how everyone's working together because it takes a community to care for a community. Absolutely. And if you stop and think about <clears throat> the three primary foundational um, issues that the Salvation Army has been dealing with for over 150 years, yes. food, housing, and jobs. Yep. You know, William Booth, our founder, started you know, <laughs> the, the Salvation Army in the Lower East End of London and looked at helping yes. um, individuals reclaim their lives, giving them a place to live, helping to feed them, and then giving them a job, giving yes. them something to do so that they can reclaim their lives yeah. again. That is what the Salvation Army is doing right here in Sacramento, and we're doing that because of your support. BigDaySAC.org. Please go online right now. Call your family, call your friends, and I've said it before, call your enemies. What a great way to renew relationships again. But post what you've done or post your, your interactions with the Salvation Army um, online. We would love to hear that as well. We would love to see. We've had some stories come through about individuals whose lives have been changed I'll tell you, it touches our hearts to know that the Salvation Army has made a difference in your life. And we want to continue to make a difference in the lives of individuals who come to us every single day. We can do that with your support. BigDaySAC.org. Go online today, and once, even once we're off the air, you can still make a donation at BigDaySAC.org until 11.59 p.m. tonight. Won't you join us in supporting the Salvation Army, and our efforts to do the most good in this area. Praise God. And we just thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And, uh, you know, maybe you can't give financially, you know, but the Salvation Army, we run on, on donations Absolutely. of time and money and talents. So, you know, maybe as you head over to BigDaySAC.org, you might, you, you only have $15 to give. Well, that's a night of housing that's for a, a family. But also click that volunteer opportunities button. Because the way that we are able to stretch the dollar so far is through our volunteers. Right. And once you volunteer once, you're going to come back again because you're going to meet, you're going to meet Sharon's, you're going to meet yep. Tomas's, <clears throat> you're going to meet Christina Kitchens, you're going to meet these lives that are transformed and you get to figure out how you plug in right. and you help build that transformation. And I want to say too is that you may not be willing or able to give a $30,000, $10,000, $2,500 donation. Every dollar that you give helps. Yes. We are able to pool that together. We are able to stretch those dollars and to be able to help meet the need of individuals who really and truly desperately need it. BigDaySAC.org. We're here for the big day of giving. Won't you join us in helping those in most need in this community? That's it for now. Yeah. See you and at three. We will see you at 3 o'clock and have a great rest of your day. BigDaySAC.org. Don't forget to donate. BigDaySAC.org. God bless.